right y'all today we are gonna make a chili and this will be a very quick recipe video because we're running short on time I want to just show you what I'm gonna be using today I'm gonna be using some organic diced tomatoes that are non GMO as well as a can a big can of crushed tomatoes some fire roasted diced tomatoes and then some diced tomatoes with green chilies this is kind of like the rotel imitation i'm going to be using some leftover ground beef as well as an onion and a little bit of a tomato that i chopped up and a mixture of red large red kidney beans and yellow kidney beans they're from guatemala the yellow kidney beans my husband really likes them so i wanted to give him a try in chili anywho i'm going to show you what i do i'm going to start off by throwing in the ground and I'm doing this one-handed so forgive me for the lack of beauty in there I'm throwing in the ground beef first that is fully cooked I'm gonna pour in the large or the diced tomatoes with the green chili next then I'm gonna throw in the fire roasted tomatoes that are diced give this uh, pour next I'm going in with the crushed tomato that big can right up top is going to be very thick and very acidic from what i can tell uh, hopefully i'll be okay and then lastly the organic diced tomatoes yeah this is big this is bigger than i imagine i need a spoon here hold on i go ahead and mix that get it nice and incorporated and then i'm going to throw in the kidney beans nothing else can fit in there hopefully these beans are they're just they've been soaking for I want to say like 16 hours so that's that and then we'll see if these can fit in there we're just gonna throw it in there why not, why not? and then give that a nice stir and then I was planning on throwing in some veggie broth so it wouldn't be so thick but just from the looks of it, I'm not sure that any more can fit in here. I'm going to give it a try. We'll see. It's looking pretty good if you ask me, but I'd like it to be a little more soupy. So let me go ahead and get that uh, vegetable broth. All right, so I'm just going to go in with this organic great value veggie broth. I'm going to open it up and throw it in there. Throw that in there. Don't think all of it will fit just because this crock pot is not, not as large of a capacity, but... Just a little something in there to get it going. And then, hopefully it doesn't need much seasoning. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of garlic salt and a little bit of onion salt. The McCormick onion salt. The garlic salt. And we'll see how it goes, yummy. I'm gonna go ahead and cover this. Yeah, it just fit just right. Plug that in there and then set it to six hours on high pressure to make sure these beans cook up and we'll come back to it at, at about 4 35 o'clock when I get home. Transferred the chili over onto my Dutch oven uh, simply because the red kidney beans cooked just fine. However, the, the yellow kidney beans that I told you guys about earlier they're rather large in comparison to the kidney bean and therefore take longer. The uh, yellow kidney bean did not fully cook and the red kidney one did. So we are just keeping this going. I uh, figure a little bit of high heat might help it cook the rest of the way through. The guys are probably not going to come home until about another hour or so. So I'm going to keep it at a medium to low simmer and hopefully it'll cook the rest of the way there. So I added some more uh, seasonings. I added some thyme as well as this vegetable broth and some adobo to the chili here. And I put a little bit of the jalapeno in there as well as some red chili flakes um, because I want this to be a little spicy, but in all honesty, I, I'm really not supposed to be eating much spicy food. So um, I tried to limit that and that way, whoever eats, they can kind of customize it to their like they can add more chilies definitely if they want to or just eat it as is. I am going to pair it with some rice that I have in the fridge as well as some cheese that I have. Good. The beans are still not fully cooked but they're definitely edible. So I um, think I'm going to go ahead and probably start serving soon because 
It's getting late and I want to eat. So I probably won't use yellow kidney beans and chili again. Um, but honestly, I, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I'm going to go ahead and serve up soon and we'll check back in. So we just finished dinner and it was pretty good. However, I'm really frustrated that the bean didn't fully cook. It was definitely edible. Um, I'm actually going to show you what I make with it tomorrow to make sure that we eat it all up. Uh, but, I mean, it wasn't bad. I'm going to go ahead and show you Canela. She wants to play. Canela! Say hi to everybody. You want to play? Did you like the chili, baby? Yes, she did. Canela, you had a little bit of chili? Did you like it, Mama? She's definitely focused on her little toy far more than me. Sometimes she likes to play tug of war, but not always. Anyway, I'm going to come back and show you tomorrow what we end up making to eat the rest of it. I was inspired by Christine at Frugal Fit Mom, so got to give credits to her. All right, y'all. So it's the following day, and I am actually going to be making some fries for the chili and we're gonna have chili cheese fries the produce is actually getting a little bit old so they're not looking too hot the potatoes i'm gonna use but they should do i'm gonna turn you around and i'm gonna show you that so these are the five little potatoes that i'm gonna use i just wash them now uh, however i'm gonna peel them because they're looking a little old and you can see those spuds growing out of them and then once i peel them i actually have uh uh, what is it called a mandolin basically a slicer that I want to try out to see how it does for cutting fries so I'll go ahead and show you that but I'll come back once I peel okay, these. so here are the potatoes all peeled up I am actually going to be baking them so I'm gonna move them over to the quarter here this is is the mandolin slicer that I was talking about it comes with like a safety kind of slicer I put the thick blades on there you can flip this over and just have it cut slices of tomato i've only used it a few times so today we're gonna try it out for potatoes and see how it goes trying to be as safe as possible here so i'm just gonna hold the handle of this and kind of drag my potato uh down and i would say do this with confidence because if you don't you could get hurt you need to just be careful and then kind of like not move in fear. You see the little metal prongs there? I'm going to stick my potato in there as much as I can. And then I'm going to, again, just slice down. I'm talking to you and saying that you need to be confident. And I need to take my own advice because... If not, I'm gonna make a mess of this out though and see what they're looking like. This is what the fries are looking like for the most part. Uh, are they perfect? No. It could be though in part because of user error. Um, it's my first time using this, so we'll see how it goes. On okay, so I'm gonna show you the potatoes in just a second, but in case you're like me and <laughs> you don't always read the directions i mean i did read the directions yesterday but i guess i didn't quite put the theory to the practice a slicer we're just gonna call it as i mentioned it has different ways to slice vegetables and it brings a little safety holder i want to explain how important it is to understand how to work this because i didn't get it until the very last potato this little handle here and this little opening here is to attach the safety thing to the slicer. Now, what I also didn't realize is this comes with little ridges on the side that you can see there. That is so that you can safely slide the vegetable back and forth on the slicer. And I feel so ridiculous because I was just doing it all types wrong. So, Little by little, guys, you learn. Fries, like I said, I didn't get it until the end. So anyway, I think they came out okay. Some of them are not so pretty. Some of them are incredibly thin, as you can see here, because I didn't know how to use that slicer. Anyway, I'm going to show you how I am going to season them. I already preheated my oven to 350. 
All right, so editing a bit here, just in case you don't make it to later on in the video, I do mention it, but I would recommend that you actually preheat your oven to 425 or at the very minimum 375. That 350 did not work. It took a lot of time to make those potatoes. So I'd recommend at least 375, 400, or even 425. Just a tip, y'all. Using extra virgin olive oil, it's first cold press, and it's also organic. Some garlic salt, and then my little McCormick onion salt here, and then a little bit of rosemary. And throw maybe one to two tablespoons of oil here, and I'm just gonna eyeball it. This looks about right. This might be three tablespoons, who knows? Somewhere around there. Mix that just to see how the french fries are doing in terms of moisture. I wanna make sure that each of them is coated with some olive oil. Okay, and that's gonna be as good as it gets. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in some garlic salt. This garlic salt does not have parsley in it. And I did a pretty generous serving of the garlic salt, as well as some of the onion salt here. And then I'm gonna give that a quick mix before I throw the rosemary in there, all right? So I think they're pretty well incorporated. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the rosemary. I just threw it in the middle there and I'm gonna scoop it out and mix. Perfect, looking good, baby. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, what we're working with. I'm gonna put these away. The oven has not yet sounded for us to throw the potatoes in. So I'm gonna give it a few moments so that- I'm gonna go ahead from the stove to throw the fries into the oven. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But before that, you can see here, my chili is starting to reheat. I've got that at a medium heat to reheat. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop in our fries. We're gonna check on them in about 15 to 20. Minutes. Just wanna show you what the chili is looking like today after a day of us eating it and kind of marinating in its own juices. You can see here that we did go through quite a bit of that chili. And on the bottom, there's a little bit of burnt, but no worries, that's all fine. We're not gonna eat that piece. But this is gonna be the leftovers for our chili cheese fries today. I'm very excited. It definitely still needs a lot more time though to get warmed up, it's still very cold. So my timer did go off for me to check it. I actually have been cooking it for about 30 minutes now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. And I did put it, I did check it at the 20 minute mark. However, it wasn't looking very done. So I decided to put it in for 10 more minutes. And I'm gonna go ahead and check it now to see if the fries look done. And once they're done, I will go ahead and zoom you in. I made a little bit of a mistake and the fries are actually probably supposed to go somewhere around 375 and 400. So I turned it up to 425 to hopefully get the fries to cook up a little bit more, get a little crispier because they're still not done. So I would say if you're gonna do this to start off at 375 for 20 minutes and check on it after that, I wasn't really sure I should have consulted the internet, but that's okay, we live and learn. So we'll check it out in another 10 minutes. Excuse the presentation here, but we did eat another meal to hold this over, but this is what it ended up looking like. It turned out to be a crowd pleaser. My guys liked it, so I was happy. If you'd like me to make something else, let me know what you'd like me to try out. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Take care, y'all.